All right, let's talk about a film. Monday saw the 20th anniversary of a very different kind of peace agreement, and although it probably passed most of us by, the path to peace came to be considered one of modern history's most successful peacekeeping missions. In 1988, the Bougainville Civil War erupted, and after 10 years of war, 20,000 people dead and 14 failed peace agreements, the New Zealand Defence Force stepped in with an unprecedented style of peacekeeping. Here to tell us more is the director of a multi-award winning documentary about the story, Will Watson. For those who don't know the story, know a little bit about it, can you just give us an overview of what happened? Okay, so the um, the story I'm doing, uh, Soldiers Without Guns, is the story of the ending of the Bougainville Civil War. And the Bougainville Civil War was a 10-year civil war, started in 1988, finished in uh, 1998, so a 10-year civil war. Uh, it had had 20,000 people die, 14 failed peace agreements, and then New Zealand decided that they would step into the breach and try and broker some sort of agreement and given that the first 14 had failed, no one gave them a chance. So um, the story sort of looks at how the war began, you know, its origins, its roots, which was in the largest copper mine ever made in history. I mean, it was a third of the world's copper was coming from that one mine. Uh, the people weren't fairly compensated. Um, they dug a hole that was two square miles by half a kilometre deep. Uh, it was producing 70,000 tonnes of runoff a day into the river system. Um, so a major ecological disaster for the people. So it's it's really a look at not only the origins of it, but also how that peacekeeping mission came about, how New Zealand got involved, and then... Um, you know, the, the, the successful conclusion of that peacekeeping mission. I mean, this, this project actually for, began for me in 2005, so it's only 13 years. I've only been working on it now for 13 years. Only. Um, yeah, only, <laughs> yeah. And I, as a New Zealand, you know, filmmaker, um, you know, that's just the reality of it. You know, there's very little funding, um, but a story like this too, which is, um, you know, probably... Uh, has a lot of sort of connotations of you know negativity towards corporations and the way that they've bullied their way around the world. So it's not necessarily a you know I can't see myself being sponsored by Coca Cola for something like this. You know, so um, it's it's very much um, a story that that looks at the heart of indigenous culture in the Pacific. And then how the New Zealand army, which was always very much a uh, colonial European army, and they fused with the Maori culture and they called themselves Nati Tomatunga, which is the war god's children. So there was a fusion of our army and that, that army was able to go over there and understand the culture and, and the way that they did things. And it was through understanding their culture that they were able to bring about the end of that civil war. So let me give you an example. Yes, give me um, an example. So the Australians had uh, attempted 14 uh, attempts to broker a peace on that island. Um, and what they would do is they would get a Bougainville faction into the barracks of one uh, army facility and the other Bougainville faction in another facility and then run around them. Yeah. Um, but when they came to New Zealand to negotiate peace, they said, well, welcome on to the Marae, here's a pofuri, and um, we're going to get you now to all sit together, talk together, and share your experiences about the war, and we don't understand how you um, bring peace about, but you guys do. It's not our war, it's your war you've got to stop. So you you work through your cultural customs to do that. So that's one example. The other example which I, which, which I highlight in the movie is... The, the New Zealand Army went over there and they says, OK, so, you know, you've had 14 failed peace agreements. Um, what's the war about? And the Bougainvillean woman and the men says, well, it's about land, you know, and, and, and you know, our land's been destroyed. And the New Zealand Army says, well, OK, it's about land. Who owns the land? And they says, well, uh, Bougainville's a matrilineal society. Women own the land. In fact, they're a step beyond owning land. They are keepers of the land. So what they do is they keep the land for the next generation. Um, very foreign to our concept of land ownership. They're, they're keepers of the land. So as a keeper of the land, they weren't looking after their future generation. So the New Zealand said, OK, so if women are keepers of the land, the owners of the land, how many women have been involved in the first 14 peace agreements? 
and they sort of tallied it all up and they came up with the answer of zero. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. So, you know, there's just two examples of why there was 14 failed peace attempts, you know. And so it doesn't take a rocket scientist. But what it does take is people that are interested in culture, understand culture, and are willing to look at other cultures. And that's the, the key difference between New Zealand and Australia in this instance, yeah. And so going about um, pulling the story together, you can tell the story, obviously. Oh, what a nightmare, yeah. You, yes, you need to have some visuals. <laughs> yeah. So you've done a lot of shooting there in present day? Yeah, so I've been over there three times now. Um, and the first time I went there, I interviewed Joseph Kabui, who was the then president of Bougainville, the autonomous region of Bougainville. Um, fascinating interview. I did another 15 or 16 interviews there. Then went to Australia, interviewed a lot of people, came to New Zealand, interviewed. So... I've got about 90 hours of interviews, which I think is excessive to say the least. Um, but it is good when you're trying to hone down on a particular part of the story. You're able to grab that sound bite and, and really follow the story. Uh, who's seen it so far? Uh, well, Soldiers Without Guns, we've uh, showed it a uh, rough cut to a few people and we're off to Cannes. Uh, Cannes is the largest film festival in the world. Uh, we took uh, Guitars and Harkers, which was very much, as I said, the, the Māori focus uh, on, on that story. Uh, that won Best International Peace Documentary of the Year. Um, and then I also won a Humanitarian Award. So I walked away with two awards, which I was very proud and uh, very happy to receive. And then um, some of the distributors came to me and said, look, what we really want is for you to sort of broaden it out. Let's let's give it, you know, a bit of history. Let's give it a broadening um, and make it a feature. So I foolishly went along with that, yeah, as if the 12 years of pain wasn't enough for me. <laughs> I just... It'll all be worth it, Will. <laughs> oh, God. The Soldiers Without Guns isn't actually uh, going to come out straight away. What we're doing is we're currently working to meet some distributors. Oh, over I see. You're going to some meetings yeah. and Yeah, things, we're going yeah. to meetings and then yeah. we've got to do the... Fin- we're raising up some finishing money. You know, films take... are in a series of stages and, um, you know, first you go out and shoot it and then you pull it all into a timeline and then you, you do a rough edit and then from the edit you've got to bring in all the historic footage and that's very expensive. It's about $100 a second. Um, so if you can imagine a minute, six grand. So, it, you know, it's quite a, a expensive business. Um, and then once you've finished that, then you go to like a, 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 an online studio and what they do is they put a colour grade through it so they, they make it look really cool. They give it a tint, which looks really cool. And then um, they do a sound grade through it too so make the sound all succinct and, 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 and stable. So, yeah, it's quite a lot to that and this is the thing when you go through filmmaking it's like a 101 on how to make a film and I I hadn't made a feature film I'd been involved in doing a lot of work for BBC and Al Jazeera but I'd never taken a full production from start to finish you know the last 12 13 years have been like my university and I think you know if you wanted to really learn filmmaking and I think going to film school is wonderful but there's nothing quite like you know hellfire and brimstone of actually going out and doing it you know Real, for real. You know. On the job. And in order to um, finish this project, you've got a campaign going, haven't you? Yeah, we're running with uh, Boosted. Basically, we're asking people if they're engaged in the story, they like the story, to give a contribution to that. And we're going to use that for the finishing funds, so for the sound grade and the colour grade. So our goal is to reach 30,000. Uh, we're 10% of that in the first sort of five or six days, so we're going quite well. We're tracking quite well. Most of the money tends to come in at the end. You know, I, I think... You know, we've we've got a project which people really want to see, and certainly we put a trailer out, and we've had something like ten thousand views on that already. So that's been really massive, the amount of interest in it already. We'll put the trailer on the Lately Facebook page. Oh, that'd be wonderful! Um, Thank you. Yeah, with the link, which is boosted.org.nz. Then it's got some forward slashes, projects, forward slash soldiers without guns. But we'll put the address on the Wonderful. Oh, that'll be great. Page Thank you as well. for that. Lovely. And let's get those numbers up. Let's get that 30K and more. Yeah, and more, because the more I have, the more historic footage I can bring in, the better the, you know, the production quality, et cetera, et cetera. That I goes thought you were going to say uh, I might be able to get paid. Oh, no, that's a, um, a thing for the famous, yeah. Um, as a filmmaker, I think you just, You know, you just really want to tell the story. In fact, to be a filmmaker, especially in documentary, you want to tell the story to the the level of obsession because there's, you know, some people lucky enough to get paid. I'm not, um, but I just really want to tell the story. You know, I think it's a really 
powerful story. Well, given your passion, I have a feeling that your fortunes may change, Will. Fingers crossed. Thank you very much for joining us. And as I said, I'll put a link up on the Facebook page to Boosted and people can also go there and see the trailer and the work that you've done so far. Yeah, the trailer's on there and, yeah, it's very easy to see what's going on. Yeah, Great to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Will. Help him reach 30K. Bougainville was a paradise. Land is our heartbeat. Fire. This gentleman will not take our land. There is going to be a guerrilla style of warfare here shortly. It was a bloody war. Bougainville is an island to the east of Papua New Guinea. Horrors have occurred there. 20,000 people killed. It is an apocalyptic story of a ravaged people. Guns brought a lot of pain. We had slaughtered one another. We didn't trust each other. Panguna mine was the catalyst for the civil war. Outsiders were needed to come and broker peace. The Maori concept group and a good shipment of guitars are going to be the main weapons in our arsenal. Who, as a commander, would say we're taking guitars and not rifles? Fair to say, felt a little bit naked. Don't give up. It was women who were willing to talk. 